Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about simple harmonic motion. And a good example of this is a pendulum, something we will look at towards the in the middle of this lecture, as a pendulum oscillates back and forth. So simple harmonic motion is a very basic version of this, looking at generally very small oscillations as things get much more complicated when you try to make larger oscillations. So let's go ahead and get started here. And what we want to look at for simple harmonic motion is that we can use Hooke's law. Hooke's law tells us about a spring. And we've looked at before that a force of a spring is equal to minus kx, where k is the force constant and x is the displacement from the equilibrium value. Now, when we look at simple harmonic motion, we are not talking about any kind of damping. So you're not going to see friction or other non conservative forces, it's all going to be conservative forces. So we're ignoring the fact that there is air resistance and there would be some friction and there would be some energy lost in the spring each time it compresses and uh, expands. So we're going to ignore all of that. And in an ideal case, this would be what we will find out is that the period of a simple harmonic oscillator T is given by 2 pi times the square root of m its mass divided by k. And what we find is that it only depends on the mass and it only depends on the force constant. Neither t nor f depend on the amplitude of this as long as we are looking at relatively small amplitudes. So they do not depend on how far it is stretched. That's going to remain. The period will remain exactly the same regardless of how far the spring is going back and forth. So very small oscillations can give you a period and larger oscillations will give you exactly the same period because you're not changing any of the numbers that you need to calculate the period T or the frequency F. But we can go ahead and look at an example of this. And our example is going to be to calculate the period and frequency of oscillation for a car if the total mass is 900 kilograms and the force constant in the suspension system is 6.53 times 10 to the fourth newtons per meter. So what do we do? Well, we've got a little diagram there looking at a car. And we have to look at what we know. Well, we know the mass and we know the force constant. So what can we do with this? Well, that's enough for us to be able to calculate the frequency. Remember, those are the only two things that we need to calculate the frequency, the force constant K and the mass M, because the only two other things needed are the number two, we know what that is, and the number pi, which we also know. So we can put those values in to calculate the frequency. And we find that the frequency is 1.36 per second. So there'd be 1.36 cycles per second or 1.36 hertz. And then in order to find the period, well, the period is just equal to one over the frequency. So we don't have to go back to our equation that we gave previously to calculate the period. We can just calculate that by inverting the frequency and then finding that it is 0.738 seconds. So once we calculate one, we do not have to go back to the equation for period, which was two pi times the square root of m over k. You can do that if you wish. And if you want to do it as a test, go ahead and do that calculation. And you should find out that you still get 0.738 seconds for the period. Now, we can also want to look at one of the other examples. This was one example of simple harmonic motion. And one I mentioned earlier was the pendulum. So a pendulum is a very common things, a swing, a clock, and a simple pendulum is a small mass suspended from a light wire or string. So we want the mass to be much less than the mass of the string. So the mass of the bob at the bottom should be much less than the mass of the spring. So we can essentially ignore the mass of the string. We also have to look at small angles. So if the angles are less than about 15 degrees, then we can ignore the fact that there is actually an angle there and we see simple harmonic motion. 
And this gives us a restoring force, which is given by the force is equal to m times g, which is just, if you recognize that, that's the weight of the weight of the mass at the bottom, divided by the length of the string multiplied by the displacement. So you might recognize that it looks very much like f equals minus kx, where k is now mg divided by l. So if we know the mass, and if we know the length of the spring string, we can then go ahead and calculate the force constant for the pendulum and give us that constant or able to determine that constant. Of course, it also depends on g. Of course, if you're on the surface of Earth, then g is just 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can look then we can calculate the period of a pen pendulum is then given by 2 pi times the square root of L divided by G. Note what it not, does not depend on. It depends on the length, not the mass. The mass does not make any difference as long as we are looking at small oscillations. So we can ignore the fact that the, the mass is there and it does not matter whether you have a large mass or a small mass there. You're still going to get exactly the same period of oscillation. Now this is something you can try yourself try to estimate the period of a pendulum you just need a string that you can hold and something that you can tie on to the bottom of it and you can do this example relatively easily and start it remember make sure it's small angles because if you do large angles you will throw things off but if you do small angles with a light weight on it and measure the period and you can even just estimate it. You don't have to try to calculate it precisely. And you can do the same thing with the larger mass. And you'll note that the period is going to be exactly the same as long as you are not changing the string length. That is the only thing that matters. So let's go ahead and look at an example of this. And in our example, there's we use our same diagram here. We're going to find instead of looking for the period, we're given the period and we're given the length, we're going to look for the acceleration due to gravity. We're going to look for g. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, we could be given a problem that gives these numbers that will show and determine, you know, for example, what planet you're on. So what would the period of the pendulum be on Mars? You could use that to figure out the acceleration due to gravity and see if that matches the acceleration due to gravity on Mars, for example. So you could actually consider uh, those kind of things as well in these problems. But let's go ahead and calculate this one and see where we are. See what the acceleration due to gravity is. Well, first of all, we have the length of 75 centimeters. Remember, we must convert that to SI units or 0.75 meters. We're given that the period is 1.7357 seconds. So we're given those. So now that we have our knowns, we can get our equation, which we know from previously, the period is equal to 2 pi times the length, which we're given over here, divided by g. And this is what we are looking for. This is our unknown in this case, because we also have the period here. So we know the period, we know the length, we now have to solve this equation for g. So we'll have to rearrange the equation and find that g is equal to 4 pi squared l over t squared. Again, I recommend that you go through and do this. Do, do yourself rearrange the equation and solve for g and make sure you can get the same, the same values here. And then once we have those, then we can go ahead and put our values in because we know everything here. We know what 4 is. We know what pi is, which we can square. We're given the length of 0.75 meters. And we're given the period of 1.7357 seconds. And if we go ahead and calculate that, we get 9.8281 meters per second squared. So... If you look at that, that sure looks like we are on Earth. Remember, we use 9.8 as an approximation of the gravitational constant. But you could do the same thing. You could actually do this calculation if you were on Mars with a different value for g and determine what the period would be like on another planet.
So we've done a couple of examples and let's go ahead and finish up with our summary here. And what we looked at in this lecture was simple harmonic motion. And that occurs when the restoring force can be described by Hooke's law F equals minus K X. And that works for things like springs. It works for things like pendulums as well. The period of a simple harmonic oscillation does not depend on the amplitude. So for small oscillations, the period is always going to be exactly the same. For very tiny oscillations, it does not go any faster. It will take just as long for a small oscillation as a somewhat larger oscillation. And a pendulum was one example that we looked at that. It does behave as a simple harmonic oscillator when we have small displacements. And we found that the period of the pendulum does not depend on the mass. So the mass makes no difference in how long it takes the pendulum to oscillate. So that concludes this lecture on simple harmonic motion. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.